be hers. Just a quick update from the Bee Ranch um, and a quick uh, frame assembly hack that we'll talk about here. We've got the workbench set up, but you can see we're still in the process of rebuilding. Still got a ways to go, um, but now bee season has overtaken us and uh, we're juggling flaming bowling pins again. So trying to work on the shop, work around weather, do removals, assemble gear. Uh, we've got tons of stuff stacked up to do, not enough hours in the day. I'm really looking forward to the, the time change when we get a little bit of daylight back here. Um, big stack of equipment there. Uh, but all kinds of stuff we've picked up for the shop. Uh, just kind of been surfing Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and other places for things. Here's a cool find. That is a 40 gallon double walled steam broiler. Typically used in restaurants, obviously, for big batches of chili and sauces and vegetables and soup. But we're going to use it for wax processing and from separate, for separating honey from uh, cappings after we harvest uh, our honey in, in May, hopefully, if all goes well. Um, a couple guys on the internet, Mr. Ed, Jeff Horshoff, he's, he's using one. Um, several companies make them specifically for our purpose, but uh, you better have deep pockets when you go get one. So you can kind of see what's going on in here. Uh, we'll keep you updated with some how-tos and what's it, some hacks um, here over the next couple months as we do removals and harvest honey and everything else we do. But for today, I'm just going to focus on um, some tips on assembling uh, frames quickly, easily, um, and strong enough that they're going to survive everything you're going to put them through um, in two, three, four, five years potentially uh, in a bee yard. So stay tuned. We'll get our camera set up and we'll get back with that. Okay, folks, can you see me? Here's the hack. Buy plastic foundation, triple wax from Pierco, um, frame assembly complete, put it in your box. Uh, just kidding. If you're running just a few hives, um, you know, it's cost effective to use this. Or if you can buy in bulk, uh, it's cost effective to use this. It's great foundation. Some people complain about the little holes in the side being places for small hive beetles to hide. Um, and, that, and that's probably true, but if you've got a good management program um, and good strong colonies, they'll take care of the small hive beetles. You don't need to worry about that. But if you can't buy in bulk, and I mean, you know, a couple thousand at least, um, these can potentially become a little bit out of the price range. Um, so I'm using some of these. My buddy Bruce Jenny from Bruce's Bees, and I'll put a link to him. Um, he loves these things. A couple other friends love these things, and I love them. Um, but I still have a bunch on hand that I purchased shortly after the fire to get me through last year. Um, your standard wooden frames with plastic foundations, what I'm using. So I'm just going to talk about assembling those real quick. Um, if you don't have one of these, spend the $25 or make one if you're handy and you have all the woodworking tools, but spend the money on a frame assembly jig. It makes life so much easier. Um, the time is, is cut way down when you're trying to balance a single uh, frame and assemble it. I'll kind of show you the difference on that here in just a sec. Um, but spend the money on one of these. You will never regret doing that. Um, so, pretty simple to operate. If you've not seen one before, spring-loaded bands kind of hold two keeper boards. They have some padding on either end. And they have a removable spacer board that helps hold your uh, end bars for your frames in place as you assemble. One of the big things you really need to pay attention to when you're doing this is which way is up. Don't make the mistake and nail or staple them all together in the wrong order where you may find it uh, impossible to get your frames out of this jig. So we want the top of our frames up here where these boards slide out nice and easy. So we're just gonna quickly load 10 frames.
Okay, you've got 10 end bars on either end, nice and neatly stacked. Um, a good premium wood glue. You can't go wrong using glue. Uh, this is Type Bond 2. Uh, I like Type Bond 2. I love Type Bond 3, but Type Bond 3 is a little bit more expensive. And when I went to get some the other day, they didn't have any. So I'm going back with Type Bond 2. It'll hold it nicely. And if you've got a little extra money and you hunt around on Craigslist, you probably notice I'm working on a stainless steel top. Uh, can't beat it. Multiple uses from, I don't know, processing your own wild game if you're into that kind of thing. Or working bees, it's easy to clean, easy to keep sanitary. All right, we'll just snap these top bars in. Now these frames that I use are groove top and groove bottom. That's what you use with plastic foundation. These are deeps, and they have holes in the end bars. And that gives me the most uh, versatility. I can use wax foundation, it takes a little trick, but it can be done. I can string them. Um, to support cone that I do in cutouts with fishing twine or I can simply assemble them as directed and use them with plastic foundation. So it's all about versatility here um, because we're constantly doing cutouts where we need that, these frames for that comb and Constantly stacking honey supers and building boxes and we're still trying to figure out how I'm just going to get two honey beehives turned into, you know, we're going to be over 200. Uh, this is an addiction. Okay, so using a wood block, tap them down. Now, you're going to be prying on these rascals trying to get them out, especially after winter when you've not touched your colonies very much at all. Here, look at my pretty face. When you've not touched your college much at all, these things are going to be pretty well stuck into the hive. So I like to put two staples in the top bar. I'll put one in the bottom, but I like to put two in the top along with that glue. That keeps things nice and steady. Um, this is a 732nd crown stapler Bostitch. Uh, I use inch and a quarter staples. And I'm going to put two in. Eventually I'll have everything set back up, but we don't have to listen to that thing when it's running. So now the bottom bars. Don't forget to close your glue. Additional advantage that this jig gives you is it will help keep your frames nice and square uh, so they don't get a little canted and give you problems going in to the hive. The 
then I'm going to tap them down. And I'm going to look at my ends and tap them. Everything's nice and flush. Boom! Ten hives assembled. It would have taken about half the time if it wasn't talking. So there we go. They're ready to come out. Like I said, if you do this wrong, you can't go the other way. They're going to catch. You've got to come out this way. So now we just roll springboards off, keeper boards. Out come my 10 frames. Just that simple. <clears throat> now, as opposed to the old way, let's see, how should I do this? I guess we'll put some glue here, and we'll put some glue here. Stick that on, stick that on, and then put some glue here, glue here, stick that on, stick that on. Now, if I'm not careful, I can put some bend in these frames, and they won't be plumb and square. So. That's one of the drawbacks to trying to do them one at a time. I'm trying to balance it and with my essential with my essential trimmer. That's no fun at all. Boom. So there's one. All right. There you go. I said that was going to be a two-minute hack or a five-minute hack. I'm sure the video is longer than that. Um, but stay tuned. We've got more coming. We're back and rolling now, and there'll be a whole lot of bee herding going on. Hey, folks, wrapping it up out here in the honey house slash new shop. It's starting to get dark. It's been raining nonstop here today. I've had about all I want after working a full day at my paying job and now coming home working several hours at my costing job. Um, did wax some foundation, put some in some frames. Uh, I did a video last year on that, but I'm going to do another one, kind of clarify a few things. I always make videos and find that uh, I didn't talk about some of the things I wanted to talk about. I talk about so much that uh, I get lost sometimes. But that's it. Y'all take care. We'll get back with you with another video here pretty quick. Keep on keeping on.